Hey everybody, this is Bob KK4DIV. In this video, I'd like to continue our discussion on packet radio. But not just packet radio, more specifically, I'd like to get into HF packet and tell you a little bit about that. But before we get into the video, I'd like to remind everybody, if you like what you see, please give these videos a thumbs up. It sure does help the channel out when you do so, and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support my videos, you could go over to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash bobplank. But now, on with the video. I have recently posted a few videos about packet radio, what you can do with it, and some basic node commands. I know that when I first heard of packet radio, all I heard about was VHF packet for local node use. But did you know that there is something called HF packet as well, where you can connect to packet stations all across the country? While VHF packet usually operates at 1200 baud, which is certainly not fast by today's standards, HF packet is much slower at 300 baud. While this would be extremely slow for internet use, and basically unusable, it is quite adequate for sending and receiving messages from bulletin boards, as well as chatting with other people keyboard to keyboard. Basically, HF packet works just the same as VHF packet, albeit slower. In today's example, I'm going to show how to get started with HF Packet with some sort of sound modem software and terminal program for your computer, a sound card interface, and a radio. Let's start with the software. The software I use is the UZ7HO sound modem for my Windows 10 machine. This software was created by Andre, UZ7HO, over in the Ukraine. Now sure, there are some other sound card modem programs out there for Windows and even some for other operating systems such as Linux, but here we're going with the UZ7HO software. Why you may ask? Well, simply because I'm familiar with it and honestly it works pretty darn well. To find the software, it's as simple as doing a Google search for a UZ7HO sound modem. The first result directs you to Andre's website. And you can find that website at www.uz7.ho.ua. Now once we arrive at the website, the first page gives you Andre's story. You know, I do find it interesting to read about how people got started in ham radio and their path to developing the software I use. But I'll let you read it for yourself. We want to go ahead and find the software. And to do this, we'll need to click on the packet radio link near the top of the page. Once you're on the packet radio page, he's got a little bit about the software, and as we scroll down near the bottom of the page, you'll find the software we're looking for. We're needing actually two pieces of software. First, we'll need the sound modem software, as I've mentioned before, and this is in a zip file with the latest version at the time of this writing is soundmodem 113.zip. The second piece of software we're looking for is easyterm49.zip. And this is the latest version of his terminal program that works with the sound modem software at the time of this video. Once you've downloaded the zip files to your computer, installing them is a breeze. There's no Windows installer as all you need is to unzip the files to a folder on your C drive. I like to keep it simple. I call my folders UZ7HO sound modem and easy term. So we've already got the software installed on our computer. The next thing we're going to need to do is connect the radio through this sound card interface. This is a signal link USB. This is a separate unit. It's a separate sound card. So you can set this up to be the sound card for your communication device. And that's what the software will use. Uh, it'll use this sound card to go to the radio. The nice thing about this, this signal link is it also has some adjustments for uh, transmit and receive. Uh, so you can adjust the uh, volume levels of each one of those as well. So you'll need a few things uh, to get going with that. You'll need 
a standard USB. This is a USB A to B. So you got the flat USB on one side. Uh, what looks like would go into a printer. Uh, on the other side, that's the B side. You'll need a, this is going to be a radio specific cable. The, what looks like an ethernet plug goes on the back of the signal link. And then this is the round plug that goes in the data port on the back of the uh, radio. The radio we're going to be using today is a Yaesu FT817. And this is a cable for cat control. So this goes in the back of the uh, cat control port, data uh, cat control port on the uh, uh, FT817. This goes into a open USB port. So looking at the back of the FT817, you've got two ports on here. You've got data and accessories. So on the data port, we will put this plug that goes to the signal link. And on the back of the signal link, you'll see it looks like a ethernet plug. You can't get it wrong. There's only one plug on there that looks like So that. in the accessory port, we're going to put this. This is for cat control. Then in the back of the signal link goes your standard A to B USB cable. And then these will go into the computer. Just like so. Okay. So the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your signal link is set up as the default communication device. So what I do is I open up control panel in your windows and then I'll go to hardware and sound and then select sound. So we can see we've got speakers, USB audio codec as our default communication device for playback and recording. We have the microphone, a USB audio codec as the default communication device. So that's exactly how we want this set up. You might have to change that on your settings, but it already went to that as the default because I think I've had this hooked to this computer before. But uh, just make sure the uh, USB audio codec, which is your signal link, is set to the default communication device on both of those. Okay, so the next thing I like to do is I like to go to Device Manager. And we're going to see which COM port this radio is on for the CAT control. We're going to go to ports. So we can see the USB serial port is COM8. Let's see that right there. So COM8 is going to be the port we will need for the radio. So next we're going to go ahead and open up the sound modem software. We can see that the software is open we can see the waterfall down in the bottom and right now it looks like it's picking up my voice on the waterfall so we know we need to go and reset the input for the uh for the water for the uh sound modem software but first the thing i like to do is i like to go to settings and go to devices i'm going to change that to a color waterfall look how much better that looks versus the black and white waterfall. So we're gonna go back up here to settings, go back to devices. So the output device needs to be my USB audio codec, and my input device needs to be the microphone USB audio codec. We're going to change the push to talk port to, to COM8, and hit OK. So now it's no longer picking up my voice on the waterfall, so we're in good shape. Next, we need to change the type or the baud rate here from 1200 baud to 300 baud because HF packet uses 300 baud. 
And that's all we need to set up for the UZ7HO sound modem for HF packet. Okay, so we have the Chameleon F-Loop antenna hooked to the radio as the antenna we're going to be using. Radio is set up and interface to the computer. So let's see if we can get this okay, going. So you see we have the sound modem software and the easy term software going here. We're going to hit this connect button. We're calling from KK4DIV and we're going to call KK4DIV-7. We've got the radio set to 7.104 and we're going to connect. You can see the sound modem is doing its thing. We are connected to KK4DIV-7. So here's my node command. Well, let's try MHERD5. Let's see who we've been hearing on the HF side. So it looks like we've been hearing quite a few people on here. So if remember you hit the question mark, we'll get the node commands again. You don't have to hit question mark every time you, uh, after every time when you, if you just know the command, you can get to where you need to go. So we're going to go to BBS. It says we're connected to the bulletin board. And if I type LM, we can list my messages. So we just got done listing my messages. I'm actually going to send a message. Send personal to K1OSE. So it adds in the address. We're going to put a title or a subject line, as we know in today's emails. I'm going to call this... Uh, YouTube test. So good. Good evening. Right. Yeah. And we will talk to you soon. Seven three. Bob. KK4DIV. And in the message, we just type in EX. So you can see how easy it is to get going on HF Packet. You just need a couple of things. You need a computer. Most people already have one of those. Uh, you will need some sort of sound card interface to go between the computer and the radio. If you have one of the more modern radios, such as a ICOM 7100, ICOM 7300, I've got the IC705, they have a sound card built into the radio. So you don't need a separate sound card interface like the Signalink. Uh, but these little radios like the Yaesu FT817 uh, do need some sort of interface like that. A lot of people already have one, so you know you could pull one out of the closet if you've already got one and uh, get that. But once you've got your Computer hooked to the sound card interface to the radio. You got the radio hooked to an antenna. You got your software, the easy term software and the UZ7HO sound modem. You can see how easy it is to connect to a HF packet station. There's a bunch of them around the country. Uh, I have one set up here in uh, Lynn Haven, Florida. And there's uh, several I hear to the north of us up in Wisconsin. I've heard some in Michigan. There's some in Canada, uh, just all around the country, Tennessee, South Florida, uh, just depending on what time of day and the band conditions, and you can connect to stations all over the country. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video on HF Packet. I hope it was informative and enlightening and maybe get you going in the right direction to get on HF Packet and give it a try. If you like these videos, as I said at the beginning, 
please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like, head on over to patreon.com slash bobplank. You can support my channel over there. So now we'll wrap it up and say 7-3 everybody. We hope to catch you in a future video. Bye-bye.